Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia, where it's absolutely crazy in my life today. I have tried everything to be on time this morning and it just hasn't happened. From flat batteries to the sound being turned down to me not hearing an alarm to, and the list goes on and on as we know. But here we are this morning and welcome Conscious Warriors to Complex PTSD TV now. If you're here for the first time, welcome. It is so good to have you with us. If you're here for the replay, press hashtag replay. And as always, if you have questions, please feel welcome to leave them down below because it's so important that we do ask questions. It's a known quantity with complex PTSD that it happens differently for all of us. So all the layers are different, so I give you X amount of information that I can around a subject but then we always have to reflect on what does this mean for me how does this appear in my life uh, what is my one next step what is the one next step that I may not know how to take but I have an idea of what direction I want to take so it can be very involved individually but we can take this information and begin to make a change in our day-to-day -day life especially because I'm really practical okay and I'm really very much let's take a practical one next step good morning ladies I'm sorry I'm late and thanks for your patience as I said it's been a crazy crazy morning this morning uh, is there anything else I need to know I oh, remember to hit subscribe so you know when I'm live and also uh, it will let you know when the platform that you're on will let you know that when the latest video is out or I am going live and remember to hit share for all of those in our beautiful global community our beautiful global family who have yet to find their voice who have yet to feel comfortable that they can step up and know that they're not alone that means so much to me and I thank you because I was once one of those people who was very much alone and very much didn't have my voice. I can laugh now, but I literally was unable to talk. So it's a blessing to get to the stage where I've recovered enough that I can talk and can begin to share with you so much information. And it's all new, you know, it is all relatively new for us. We are the first generation that's going to be able to break the cycle of handed down generational intergenerational trauma that gets handed down and uh, it definitely got handed down in my family so today today we want to look at we want uh, sorry let's start again my apologies I want to share with you some information around five things we need as adults when we were unloved as a child now unloved as a child means that we didn't have that one or more Per people, persons, adults in our life that we could create a secure emotional connection with, okay, and when we didn't have that, it actually impacts us at a brain level. So if we imagine our brain as this supercomputer, and it is, well, it's even better than a supercomputer, but for the sake of us having an understanding of what's happening up here, if we imagine it as a supercomputer, and we imagine it as having many different apps. So think of your phone, when you look at your phone and you see all the apps on there, and if one of them isn't working properly, then the whole thing that you wanna do doesn't function. Okay, so we wanna restore not only some of our apps, but we wanna be able to have our apps work together to make like a whole platform of life possible. So when we're unloved, it does create an abandonment wound. So one of the things that we need to develop and can to develop in our adult life is a sense of belonging, pardon me. And complex PTSD is different to anything else. It does mean that we haven't had the experiences so our supercomputer hasn't had the experiences that we need to have as adults in order to make the supercomputer work, okay, as a whole. 
but it also means as adults we can go about creating those experiences so that one, our brain stops being triggered. So for example, uh, I'd been at gym for oh, around six years, okay? And when I changed gyms, so I went from a small gym to a bigger gym, it required certain parts of my brain to adapt, all right? So I had to have different uh, tools to help my app, that part of my brain, adapt to what I was doing, okay? And if we don't have those resources, then we're still going to say, stay in the same cycle as we've always been on. So I'm continually stretching myself. So I've been doing uh, Facebook Lives for, oh, I'm not sure now, <laughs> over a year, 18 months, uh, possibly headed towards two years. And now my next stretching comes in putting together my story and going out in public and sharing uh, all that I've learned to help other people. So of course, the first part in our brain that's going to respond to something new is change is dangerous. It's uh, an unknown. So if we were a child that grew up in a family that was curious, that fostered a good sense of self, that fostered adventure is normal, then our brain wouldn't respond to the in a triggered manner in what we want to do, our one next step. But because we weren't brought up in a family like that, we have to make, um, not, we have to have compassion for ourselves but we also have to, not have to, we also can develop strategies for how I'm going to go into my one next step and allow my supercomputer to feel comfortable about it, okay? So we can do this. Now a sense of belonging comes about when we connect with other people. So we wanna find ways that we feel safe to connect with other people and also ways that we can develop strategies around connecting with other people so that we feel safe, all right? So when we foster that sense of belonging, and even if we start in our group, all right, people begin to feel safe. The very core of complex PTSD is us feeling safe to have our voice because it's often been stripped of us and we don't necessarily know how to feel safe to express ourselves. See how complex PTSD is? <laughs> but we can do it. I want to encourage you that we can do this. We can step up and do it in a safe manner so that our supercomputer stops being triggered and we can begin to embrace our lives again. We need to create or be in a space where we have validation of our thoughts and feelings. Now that'll come from us developing our sense of self uh, who I am, so being very secure in who I am in order that we cease to look to others to validate who I am, to validate my thoughts and emotions. Now, when we're healthy, there's nothing wrong with having somebody that we validate our thoughts and emotions with, but we don't want, and that means that I can say to a good friend, listen, this is what I'm feeling, um, and I did this recently, and I said to my friend, I'm just not sure how to process this on a mental level. Like, how do I think about this? I know that my feelings aren't serving me, but how do I think about this? Because I've never been in this situation before. So I need to learn how to manage it, all right? Now, it wasn't for that person to tell me how to think or feel, but because they were able to tell me how they thought and felt about things in that particular area, I was able to sit back and then work out what worked for me. The minute somebody says to you, well, this is how it is and that's it, then we're gonna take a step back as adults and go, well, no, you're not giving me the opportunity to work through what works for me and to have that as a dynamic progressive revelation of who I am, which means that over time, I'm developing what works for me, what feels good for me, um, and I'm putting down what I used to think worked for me and now I'm stepping into becoming an adult, okay? 
So we want to be able to do this. Uh, Diana said, I cancel friendship meetups because my PTSD feels triggered. So what you need to do in that situation, Diana, is work out strategies. Uh, so have a professional that you can work with that first of all works out around what your triggers are. Then you can develop one step at a time strategies that can help take you into that situation and also strategies when you're in that situation, what you can do to continually feel safe, even if you're triggered, and what you do so that you can keep going back to that situation until the brain adapts, all right? Because to avoid a situation, you know, it's we're shooting ourselves in the foot if we avoid situations for connection because we need it. Our brain needs it, you know? Our brain needs it for brain health. We need it for heart and com communication. Connection, health, connection helps us be healthy, okay? So we can't ignore it. Um, we need, with our developing sense of self, we will have a genuine self-confidence that even if somebody says something, and I don't know about you, but I do this, if somebody says, well, that's not right, you know, we shouldn't be doing this or saying that or blah, 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 my initial response is, oh my goodness, you know, I've really done something wrong here. Um, you know, we step into that, I'm um, blaming myself and how can I uh, make it right but still not ignore how I feel that what I've said is valid. A genuine self-confidence and sense of self has us being in a space where we can say, well, that's okay if that's where they're at on their recovery journey but they don't get to take away from me that what I've said works for me at this particular point in time. And it's that heartfelt, I know where I am and it's okay for me right now, okay? Um, and you often find the most critical people of saying things, well, you know, we shouldn't be saying this because you know, you're, you're victim blaming. And I see this all the time, trust me. And I say that with like, oh my goodness, how can you say I'm victim blaming when I've been in that space? It's the last thing I would do. But, you know, and they say, you know, we've got, they don't even get to the point where they say, we've got to have compassion for each other because then they'd have to have compassion for me too. But what I do say is that's okay if that's where you're at and that's how you feel. It is okay where I'm at and how I feel. This is what's working for me. All right, and it has to be okay that both things can exist in the same space. And this is where black and white thinking has us has the whole fabric of our life coming undone if we're not seeing that both things are valid in the same space. All right, so that's when we're developing a genuine sense of self confidence. Uh, emotional maturity. Can I just say, if somebody had ever said to me years ago that I was emotionally immature, I would have went, you've got to be kidding me. Here I am taking on responsibility for children, for a relative uh, who you know keeps coming and turning up at my house with their addiction problems. I take responsibility for trying and helping them. And you know, you know this list. You know this list because it goes on and on and on of all the people that we take responsibility for. And then when we say, no, we're not taking responsibility anymore, you're an adult, you've got to sort your own life out, we're the worst person in the world. <laughs> and I got really okay with being the worst person in the world in their life because I had to emotionally mature and say, they're an adult now, they've got to take not control, they've got to take responsibility for their choices too. And then this emotional maturity comes also, there's so many facets of it, so don't, don't get cut and dried, just think, where am I developing in this area? I realised that emotional maturity came with a responsibility to stop people pleasing and to start saying, this is where I'm at this is who I am and I can only do so much okay I can't do it all I just cannot do it all for other adults at all 
And you know what? When we're able to start saying that, there's this place in us that begins to open up with this strength. And we know that we're taking on responsibility. We're taking emotional responsibility for ourselves. And it's a really, I, I wish I had words. So it's like our heart opens up and it starts to become more full because I've recognized that I can't do it all. And when I take responsibility that I can't do it all, it's also very freeing, all right? Yes, it's hard. It's hard to say I can't do it all when I was wired to do it all, when I was wired to people please, have no sense of self, uh, to put others first and so on. But if I don't say no and recognize what I can't do, then I can't come here and do what I'm wired to do to help other people, okay? It takes a while to wrap our mind around it, but don't give up, all right? I don't want you to give up in working towards emotional maturity. And look, it's a known fact in soldiers who are naive that they will develop PTSD. With us, we've come through our life and complex PTSD hits us in adulthood and we don't even know that we haven't had a chance to go through the process of emotionally maturing. All right. Okay, parental love. So how do we get something we've never had, we've never experienced in our lives? We work on our abandonment wound, okay? We recognize when we internally need to feel safe, to connect with ourselves. And when you've done a lot of work around your abandonment wound, I could literally feel inside of me where I was avoiding connecting with myself. So one of the simplest ways we can begin to recognize when we're abandoning ourselves and we're not connecting with ourselves is when somebody says something kind about us and we can't accept it, okay? We go, well, that's not true, we reject it, all right? And the first thing we wanna say is, am I abandoning myself? Am I not owning that I am this good, kind, generous person? Okay, so Claire says, why is it when you live far away from your childhood home, you can put boundaries in place, but as soon as you go back, it's like I slip back into old habits of people pleasing and my thoughts get stuck. So you slip back to old feelings and beliefs. Absolutely we do, because we haven't, address the abandonment wound inside of us. We haven't developed a sense of self and also it triggers us. So when, we, when we're in our families of origin, our whole nervous system is wired to go straight into trigger mode to try and keep us safe, to even keep us emotionally safe. So what happens is at an unconscious level, and I really want to be very, um, <laughs> emphatic about this it's at an unconscious level that things like that that makes us feel like home so then we go back into how did I feel at home this is a simple way of putting it. it's far more complex uh, the wiring comes back to what I was at home so in order to go back to home we have to develop and not have that massive trigger go off we have to have developed our sense of self. We have to know who I am so that when we do, and I've done this, I've gone back into the situation where uh, I've visited family and I had to keep very good track of what was happening for me and internally and watch for the moment that my responses would buy back into the drama. And I had to have that, sen that sense of self and the ability to control what was happening for me internally so that I could walk away from the family and say, yeah, I've had a good visit. They've not changed. Time to move on with my life. Now, the important part about this is when somebody comes along into our life, so for me, 
when a guy would come along in my life that was like my family, it would be like, oh, it just feels like home. It feels like I've known you forever. And that's because our whole brain and nervous system is like, oh yeah, we know this. Too easy. This is easy. It's easy to love you because I've loved people like this my entire life. But the trouble is, as adults, the stress and the pressure keeps going, going till we become unwell. So I have to, and I have had to consciously develop and trust my internal system, so my gut instinct and what I'm seeing inside of that person, and say, no, I need to step back. Um, one person I had to say to, look, I'm sorry, please don't contact me again. And it's not necessarily that they're a bad person, all right it's just they trigger uh that old from one of the, the old responses in me which means that there's something happening in their life that's from the past and i need to step back i need to be emotionally mature and say no i've got to step back from this it's a lot of hard work so and this doesn't happen overnight it won't uh if you need to know the answer to who am I, the My Authentic Self course in the Conscious Warrior Academy will give you every exam, every way to get back to who I am and it works. I guarantee 100% that that course works because without it, I wouldn't be sitting here today and being able to do the work I do. Okay. All right, lovelies, thanks for your patience and uh, remember above and beyond everything else you are loved. And I really appreciate you coming along and joining in this morning. Have a beautiful, beautiful day and I will catch you later. Bye for now.